Martin. I am TG Watkins. I am the owner and creator of Moxie Trader. Let's see here. All right, we'll do the standard disclaimer, making sure that everybody knows that this is for education purposes only. And um, since we have a big group here, I'm sure everybody's wondering, you know, what kind of presentation is this for? Who is Moxie for? And is it for day traders, swing traders, investors? Well, I know it's a little kitschy, but yes, it's for everybody. And if I can get a kind of an idea of the crowd that we have, if I get D for day traders, S for swing traders, and I for investors, that would kind of give me an idea of where to go with the presentation and uh, maybe a few more examples. All right, definitely getting some responses there. So good, thank you. All right, so yeah, as uh, Renee mentioned, uh, how did I even get here? Uh, my dad did manage his own money when uh, he was trading the market and uh, you know, this was back when I was younger. We definitely had a computer like this and only one screen. And I would come home, he would come home from work and I would sit on his lap and we'd look at charts. I think it was daily charts or daily graphs was our primary thing that we'd be looking at. And uh, I think he was using my, my uh, child brain to just see trends and not be confused by money and uh, you know, all the uh, problems of, uh, of life and whatever. And so he said I actually made some good money for him occasionally. I don't know if I ever, ever lost any money for him. He never told me about that, but uh, we had a good time doing all that. And then over here on the right, uh, he and I would always work on different projects. You know, if we had to repair something on a car or uh, I would build radio controlled cars. We didn't have a motor or a cycle or anything, but um, you know, anything in the house, if it broke, we'd take it apart, kind of see what's going on. So this is kind of my background. And um, as, uh, also as part of the introduction, um, you know, I'm sure this is a very familiar view for a lot of you going to some of these seminars, big classes, projectors, people kind of telling you about their, their stock trading software and what's involved. Yeah, maybe a little boring sometimes, but has anybody ever seen a child in one of these? Uh, you know, it's usually filled with older people, got some money, interested in making some more money. But, uh, you know, my dad would take me around to a couple of these and I'd be the only 12 year old around. And the people there kind of got a pretty good kick out of it, especially the presenters. They're like, well, this is new. Uh, some of them would actually say, hey, uh, come back in a few years, tell me where you are. And uh, I think they'd actually be surprised that I stuck with it. But yeah, just imagine me, 12 year old somewhere in there. Um, so <clears throat> my interests really have shaped my trading style. Uh, this is my 1977 Camaro on the left. I actually built that when I was in high school. I still have it, that's a relatively recent picture. But the point that I'm showing about that is that I like I like nuts and bolts. I like to work on things. I like to build things. I like uh, the go no go feature that mechanical things offer. You know, the bolts either going to fit or it's not going to fit. Same with the part. And this really allows me to kind of uh, take that same mindset and structure and apply it to stock trading. Uh, my dad and I are also both pilots. The important thing about this is that we use uh, <clears throat> we use uh, checklists. And uh, checklists are very important. You know, we, we always talk about rules when it comes to trading. We want to make sure that we uh, go through our list. We want to go through our list and make sure that we have all the rules in place, that we know what we're doing, that we go from A to C, and that we uh, are under control with it. Again, with the whole go, no go. My relevant background, uh, manufacturing and engineering. I graduated in 2010. And, uh, <clears throat> Sorry, kind of losing my voice over here. So graduated in 2010, again, manufacturing engineering. Uh, again, with the whole go, no go mechanical stuff, this is how I, I run my, my trading. I want to make sure it's very mechanical. Uh, I graduated in 2010, and then I actually kind of switched sideways. I went into uh, financial advising with New York Life, and I did that because I like to help people. I like to work with money. I like to... Um, uh, in the financial industries, whatnot. And then as far as my uh, series six and 63, I got that, so I was qualified. And uh, after about four years, I had some success, but it really wasn't quite my thing. And so I wanted to switch, and that's where I kind of get back to my roots with stock trading. Uh, my first three years, I started to dedicate myself to studying the markets in 2012. It's about halfway through my New York Life um, tenure, my New York Life career. And really where this started from was one of the people that I met at one of these three-day seminars was um, Sue. And she was my mentor for a while. And I asked her, I said, you know, are we, is this actually something that is teachable? Like, can people learn this? And she said, absolutely. 
you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I wasn't born knowing how to trade. Nobody's born knowing how to trade. And so I said, okay, well, if people can learn this and if people can figure out how to trade the market, then I'm going to learn how to do this and figure it out. So that, that was kind of when I set myself on the path. I said, look, I want to be an active trader. I want to do this for income. I want to figure out how to, how to make this work. And that's where I found some trading software through my mentors. I did the education thing and uh, I found the support that I liked. I had trading groups, I had the, the seminars, and uh, I participated in the webinars also from the mentors uh, several times a week. But honestly, I mean, my first three years, I didn't get anywhere with it. I'd have some wins, I'd have some losses, uh, I'd have a good win, and then I'd get about three or four little losses that would just add up and wipe out my wins. And I'm sure everybody here kind of understands that. We've all been through that. It's basically death by a thousand small losses, and uh, that's definitely what I suffered from. So what didn't work? Why didn't it work? My issue really was that I couldn't, I couldn't read, I couldn't interpret. There was no precision to me for the, the charts that I used. You know, we got the Ishimuku cloud over here. It's a cloud. I mean, for heaven's sakes, it, it's like the least preci precise thing for me. I just couldn't quite understand it. Over here on the top right, we got the, the MACD. You know, it's a bunch of squiggly lines, you know, blue over yellow. It didn't work for me. Uh, I didn't know where to go with this. Uh, the precision, again, just wasn't there. They're lines. They make no sense to me. And then on the bottom left, we got three or four lines. I mean, just, just add more of this stuff, and it's even more confusing to me. And, uh, we, you know, RSI, DMI, DPO, it's all the same. meant nothing to me. Uh, we got the Bollinger Band here on the bottom right. It's kind of the same thing. I like the math behind it. I like the principles. Uh, I do find it valuable, but it was very general. Um, you know, this looks like a fat snake. I don't know where to trade with that. I don't know when something's actually going to bounce off the top or actually find a bottom and bounce off the top, the bottom and give us a trend. And maybe I'm looking at something like this for a longer term investment, but I wanted to be an active trader, you know, somewhat of a day trader, mostly a swing trader to kind of slow things down. And none of this stuff really worked for me. So I started kind of looking back, looking through charts, trying to figure out what happened, where these things go. And I started adding some moving averages, figuring out that, you know what? price bounces off these things. Okay, there are certain moving averages that are strong, certain that are not. When does price, like right here, bounce off the first one, but it doesn't bounce off the second one? Like, how do we figure this out? I needed some sort of guide rail to say, well, this one's strong, but this one isn't, and you need to be aware of that. So um, it just, it didn't work. So I kind of kept moving around, like why was this one underneath the moving averages and exploded? but this one's over the moving averages and fell. And it just couldn't make sense of it. How about this one? You know, we're talking about trying to buy breakouts. You know, they always say, well, you know, if it's a breakout, it shows that there's good support and it got out of its range and now it's gonna run. But why did this thing fall? You know, we probably would have bought it right around here. We would have been good for a couple of days, patting ourselves on the back and then it falls down. We would have panicked. We would have gotten out right here uh, only to have it kind of migrate back up here. We could have gotten out break even I want to see if there was a way to figure out that we actually skipped this whole thing and know that this was a trap. And then what about this one? Came through the moving average, bounced off this one, made it on top of the other, but now it's going nowhere either. Like why, why is this not doing anything? So I decided to take matters into my own hands. I took the three years that I had been losing money and kind of ripping my hair out, trying to figure out what's going on. I took all the lessons that I learned. I read some books. I started, I studied, uh, other indicators. Um, I tried to figure out what was going on. I looked into their codes. I looked into their principles and to the mathematics. And I just started cobbling some things together and doing uh, some background and testing and a whole, whole lot of observation. And this is what I came up to. And I know it kind of looks like a squiggly line, one of those squiggly lines that I said, you know, it's the worst thing for me. But here's the real important thing. The fact that they are stair-stepped. The, there's, the stair stepping actually gives a whole lot more information than you'd think. I can tell, just like going back to earlier where I said go no go, that when it goes from a green to a red, vice versa, that I can tell instantaneously. There, there's no interpretation of a squiggly line, like did that go up, did that go down? I know, cut and dry, that this went from down to up a little bit, and then the fact that the stair step is higher tells me that there's a lot more energy, when there's a little bit of stair steps, that tells me there's a little bit of energy. And then we have the gray line, 
which is the zero line, and we have the positive energy above that and the negative energy below that. So that's also very important. And then those other words that you guys are familiar with, positive divergence, negative divergence, you know, entry, exit, of course, and then uh, lagging energy. So I'll get back to some of that too. And then as I was putting all this together, I started to realize that when I took the chart price, the price chart, and I started to actually put the moving averages together with them, and then I started to actually add the MOXIE indicator in as well, and once again, just through a whole lot of observation, trying to figure out what works. You know, we're speculators. We need to use our eyes to see where the patterns are. And it also it started to uh, become clear to me. Entries and exits for my particular system have all the same rules. You just invert them. So for example, for an entry, we want price over the moving average, and we want the MOXIE indicator at or above zero. And that's exactly where it happened right here. And then for an exit, we just reverse that. We want price below the moving average, and we want the indicator at or below zero, right there. Does anybody recognize what, uh, what chart this one is on the right? All right, we'll go back to that. That's one I wanted to talk about. So yeah, let's go look at some uh, real charts. So the VRX, this, um, the MOXIE indicator down here was the one I just showed just a couple slides ago when I was going over what the MOXIE indicator actually is. And then going back to the checklist, You'll see it up here, we're gonna go through it. It's gonna be the same thing over and over and over. Actually, yeah, I like that you guys are starting to guess. No, that was the S&P. That was the S&P that took that waterfall. And we saw on my system that the S&P was gonna roll over uh, actually a couple weeks ahead of time. So the group that I was teaching, they were all pretty thankful for that. So as far as something for a trade, we want to have a heads up. We're not gamblers. You know, we're not trying to roll the dice. We want to have an edge. We want to know that we have something coming. And that's the whole point of indicators. And if you use moving averages, you want to see that something is building. So positive divergence is the first thing that we're looking for is kind of a heads up. And by positive divergence, I mean that we have price down and we have the MOXIE indicator climbing up towards the zero line, trying to get on top of the positive area. And then we have the rule. We need price over the moving average, and we need the MOXIE indicator crossing zero. And that's exactly what we have right here. Price is now on top of the moving average, and we have the MOXIE indicator starting to climb through zero. Now, as far as this one goes, we have a very strong moving average right on top, and that's exactly where price went to. So as far as an experienced trader, you should be aware that those moving averages and those support and resistance areas are around you. And in this case, just get out, because it's not gonna work. And so sure enough, but as we continue on and we we'll walk through this particular chart, you can see also that the MOXIE indicator keeps you safe. And the way that works is we have price right through here. It's trying to just walk its way up the moving average. And then we have uh, down here on the indicator, notice how it really doesn't have any energy. It's kind of red, it's kind of green, it's going sideways. It's actually going a little bit down. Price up, indicator down, that's not good. And so we then have the rule for exit. We have price underneath the moving average, and we have the indicator crossing through zero. It's textbook. I mean, you, have, you know exactly where to get in, you know exactly where to get out. It's the same thing over and over and over. So let's go on a little bit further. We let the stock continue to play out, and now we have positive divergence again, So which is price coming down and the indicator coming up. So we got a little bit of heads up. Now what are we looking for next? The rule. Notice, same thing again. We want price over the moving average, and we want the MOXIE indicator to cross through zero. And we got that, so we go in. And then we figure out, well, finding an entry, you know, that can maybe be easy. You know, if you didn't quite get this and you wanted to wait till after earnings, so let's say you got in on this gap up because, well, heck, you know, it jumped up, let's just get in. So you got in here, and it climbs up, and you're good for a few days, but then it starts to pull back down. And now it goes through the moving average, and now it's basically back to break even where you came in. And maybe you freak out a little bit, that's where you get out. And at least you didn't lose any money, but then you miss all of this, just because maybe your head got a little confused and you kind of shot yourself in the foot. Well, the point of the MOXIE indicator is to tell you how much gas is in the tank, you know, how much energy there is, and that you can actually stay in. So price is here below the moving average, but the indicator still above zero. It's got plenty of fuel. And so this is actually a divergent situation and the indicator is gonna win. 
So what it does, it actually pushes price right back up out of that moving average, and it does it with some pretty good force. The next time it comes into the moving average, bounce right off. How about this? Same thing, we have price below the moving average, but the indicator, still above zero. We still have fuel in the tank, and thank goodness you stayed in, because look at this move that came up here now. now. At this point, we're now looking for negative divergence, because we're in a trade, so we had positive divergence to try and get us in a trade. Now we're trying to be aware of negative divergence to be aware of when we might need to get out. And this is exactly what we're half seeing now. So price has gone this much higher, but look at the two peaks of the Moxie indicator. We're, we're not getting a new high here. This is where it turned down. So price did drop, and maybe at this point, again, you're kind of kicking yourself, thinking, well, you know, I should have gotten out here. But again, based on the rules, you stay in. The indicator is still very much above zero, and price it hasn't gone through the moving average. And look, look, look what happens. Comes up and actually tries to, again, meander itself along the moving average. But what's happening now? Price is kind of coming up. Indicator keeps going down every day. Price up, indicator down. Then what happens? Right here. Back to the rule. Same rule every time. Price below the moving average, indicator below zero, just like clockwork, you know? And then you might say, well, well, TG, you, you left some money on the table. Like, what about this? You, you missed it. Nope. That's a trap. Look at where the arrow is. So the arrow up here on price, price is above the moving average, but now look at the indicator. It's lagging. And that's what I said on that uh, slide just a couple of ones ago, that now this is coming from below zero. It's coming from a negative space, a negative energy. And sure enough, you know, okay, price runs a little bit, but now we get this topping pattern up here. Price can't get any further. Look what happens to the Moxie indicator. Starts to roll over. This gives you a real heads up because this should be climbing if that price is going to keep going. And then once again, same rule. Price crosses the moving average. Indicator crosses zero. Same rule every time. All right, let's go look at some live charts here. Uh, I saw that we actually had quite a few day traders. So I wanted to... You know, step down, we'll go into a day trading situation here. And uh, let's see. Apparently all my charts changed up. There we go, okay. Five minute on the right, and we got the 15 minute on the left. Actually, let me clean up some of these for you so we can go right back through this again. I was practicing earlier. <clears throat> all right, so we'll just kind of take this peek and we'll walk through it. Now notice that my crosshairs are coordinated. That's also important for me because I want to make sure that um, you, we can see the context from the five minute to the 15 minute because you need to know where you are in the bigger picture of things and I'll just demonstrate in a second. So what do we have? Price continued to go up, but now the Moxie indicator went down. So that's kind of our heads up. Remember, if we go back to our notes, our checklist, we're looking for divergence, positive or negative. And now how about this? This is where price goes through the moving average, and look where our indicator is. It's below zero. So that's where you get out, or that's where you go short, and down it goes. And you might kind of look at something like, okay, here's a moving average. Why didn't it bounce off that? Well, we did get a little bounce. This isn't really what's important, and I'll show you why. We have a little bit there. And, uh, you know, price did move up. But again, we have to put this in context. Look at the 15-minute chart. Where this price went up, I'll zoom in on a little bit for you, it went right into the underside of the moving average on the 15-minute chart. It's just like it hit its head on the ceiling. And if you look at the indicator down here, nowhere near zero. It couldn't even get on top. So while you might have seen a little bump up here, it's just a better place to get a short. Because look at this, it's getting stuck underneath the moving average. And there it goes, it just waterfalls on down. Now at some point, you know, maybe we're looking for a way that we can kind of find the bottom, where are we going to get in? So once again, we go back to our notes, we're looking for divergence. What are we seeing? Right here, it's so price down. Notice indicator starts to go flat, right there. And then we get this. Here's where it really kicks in. Price goes down even further, indicator goes higher. Isn't that amazing? That's something you wanna pay attention to. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And now look at this, we have price, gets on top of the moving average, and where is our indicator? Very, very high. And what do we say? Here's our checklist. We want our two-part entry. Price over the moving average, we want the Moxie indicator over the zero line. 
right there. That's what happens. So then we come through and we're trying to figure out if we're going to get through this moving average. Well, it gets knocked down a little bit. And just like I showed you on the previous chart, it comes down uh, to, to the 50. And then the indicator is still above zero. So we're good. And actually it bounces right off and just sails on through this. Now as we come up, it's kind of bouncing along the, the moving average, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And we're seeing that our indicator is starting to wear out. This is something important we need to start paying attention to. And this is the divergence that you're talking about. Here's where price tries to go up a little bit. The indicator, having none of it. Can't even get back onto zero. Won't do it. And then here is where price goes through the moving average. And this is where the indicator is red. And you know what? Look at my crosshairs. This exit on the five minute that the indicator was telling us about is where price ran right into the moving average on the 15 minute. So even if you weren't looking, if you couldn't see this for some reason, the indicator is telling you what you need to know down on the five minute. So yeah, pretty important. Uh, so then since we were looking at day trades, how we look at the next morning? We have a moving average below us. We kind of have something on the 15 minute. We, we need to know if it's gonna be strong. Is it gonna bounce off that? We come in through here. We got our double bottom. Look at this. Here's our divergence. And then look at this. Here's the indicator above zero. And this is where price finally gets on top of the moving average. And once again, I refer to our checklist. Did we get divergence? Did we get our two-part entry? We sure did. And now look at this. Up, up, up. And we're really strong on the higher time frame chart. So that's kind of our, our peace of mind and our security. Now, let me switch over to to the S&P because I know we're getting a lot of action on there and there was definitely some confusion earlier on. Uh, Daniel, yes, uh, so far this only works on Thinkorswim. I've been working with a programmer trying to get this on TradeStation, but uh, TradeStation has been having some development problems and uh, they have yet to really figure out the bugs of how to make this thing work. Like we, we have it, but it's not quite, it's not quite accurate. And you could tell, like, you know, because I like these stair steps, this is absolutely important that we have that accuracy. So Thinkorswim is where it is, and I, I really like them. I've been with them for six years and quite thrilled. All right. So where I want to start is on this dip down. We're on the hourly chart on the right side, this dip down. Notice how price went below the moving average, but the indicator, Moxie indicator, was still at zero. It really didn't even go below it for as much as this went down. That was telling me like, oh, we've got some pressure here. You know, it doesn't want to go down. And so sure enough, came up here, still needed to navigate this moving average, came on down through. Look at this. Price went down, but the indicator continued to go up. The indicator was pushing price. This is how powerful and important this thing is. And so then we have to work through this moving average. And you kind of see we get right on top of it, pulls back a little bit. And now we've got everything in our direction. If we look here on the daily chart, you can see yesterday, we actually closed above the moving average. And then we have the indicator looking green. And today it shot up, no surprise. I mean, I've been all over this thing this morning, so th this is great. Now, the only thing I'm gonna concern about is here on the daily chart, we are above the moving average, but our indicator is still lagging a little bit. So I'm not sure that we're out of the woods. You know, we might get some good moves here, but um, I don't think we're going to be starting an entirely another trend. I also knew that back here, you see this little pop up here? I knew that wasn't going to work out because look where our indicator was, below zero. That never had a chance. And this is how you make sure that you don't get into false trades. So let me show you that other one that I talked about earlier. This is CAR, C-A-R as far as the ticker goes. This is uh, Avis Budget Group. So let's just kind of walk through this one. You know, I read, I read charts like a book. And once you guys get this indicator, that's the whole point. When I developed this, this is the thing that gave me sense to the movement of the market. It told me when the moving averages were gonna be strong, it told me when they were gonna be weak. And that gave me the, the guide rails, you know, like the bumpers on a bowling alley to kind of figure out what's gonna be happening. Well, how about this? You're saying, well, price went through the moving average. Did we go in? No. Because again, back to our checklist, we have price over the moving average, but we don't have the Moxie indicator over the zero line. In fact, it's still down here. 
So what does price do? It runs, okay, but then it pulls back, and it pulls back right into the moving average. And look at this point. Price doesn't start moving until the indicator crosses zero. Isn't that cool? And then you go up and up and up and up. Now what we're looking for? Divergence. Look at that. Price keeps going higher. Moxie indicator, that can't quite do it. Go back to our notes. This is our checklist. We're looking for our divergence. Now we're on, now we're kind of paying attention. We need to say, okay, our, our, where's our two part exit rule? Remember, price under the moving average, Moxie indicator under the zero line. We go, we go, we go, we go. I'm watching the indicator. It's getting closer and closer to closer to zero. It's kind of like a timing mechanism right here and right here. There's your exit. And you say, well, but what about this move? Now, this move was a trap because look at this. Here is where price is above the moving average, but look where the indicator is. It's red, it's green, it's mixed, it's flat, but it's mostly below zero. This has no energy. This is, this is price leading the indicator. This is like the tail wagging the dog. Yeah, it doesn't, it, it, this was telling us that for whatever reason, yeah, price jumped, but there was no energy backing this thing up. This was an anomaly, and this is a trick. And that's exactly what it was, and it fell right back down. And then what about through here? See this? Okay, is this gonna run? You know, is this, it's now over the moving average, shouldn't this run? Look at the indicator, under zero. It's operating in the negative space. There's no way price is gonna go. It has, it's got nothing, nothing for it. Under zero, don't go. And sure enough, it eventually, uh, price capitulates to the indicator and down it goes. Boom, 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 boom. So, and, and currently I'm kind of watching this thing. I'm not so thrilled about it. Uh, Steve, yeah, we could do this live in the market. I mean, uh, I just went through the uh, Google as far as what we're looking at. And uh, the S&P, yeah, just stepped down to the five minute. I told you um, just a, a minute ago how I saw that today was going to be a great day popping in the market. I mean, we can, this works on any time frame. That's the whole point of why I asked everybody, hey, are you a day trader? Are you a swing trader? What are you looking for? Because this thing can do it. You just have to adjust it to whatever time frame you're looking for. So I know other presenters here today have been talking about Bitcoin, so I figured I might dip into that a little bit and show how you can trade Bitcoin. Now, I use the ETF called GBTC. And the reason I do that is because it's the only ticker, the only ETF that uh, uh, I can get on Thinkorswim and actually put my indicator on it. So, you know, crazy ride by, back here. You got to use multiple time frames. You would have seen this thing up here on the 15 minute when something just, this is how stocks work. When they go up this fast, they're going to come down just as fast. Think about the yellow brick road. If you if you just start floating off the yellow brick road, you get away from all of your support. There's nothing holding you up, and it's going to come on back down. Steve, don't worry about it. This thing's being recorded, so you can go back and check everything out. Also, well, how about this? Let's say that you know we see price is getting supported by this moving average. Everyone's real hopeful about Bitcoin, and we want to see if this thing's going to take off. And look at this. It's now over over all the moving averages. Shouldn't this go? Where's the market? the indicator it's below zero this never had a chance wasn't going to do anything can't do this you know again looking at our checklist is there divergence i didn't really see any divergence what about our two-part entry yeah we had price over the moving average but did we have the moxie indicator over the zero line nope and look what one the indicator one and pulled price down so let's see if we can find anything else how about this Right here. See that divergence? Okay, we got a heads up. That's the whole point. That's why this isn't gambling. This is stock trading. We want to have an edge. We want to know when something's going to work. And check this out. You guys like this. It's, a, again, timing mechanism. Here's where price crosses through the moving average. Mm, but it doesn't go because look at where the Moxie indicator is. It's still too far below zero. And you know what this thing does? It goes sideways, sideways, sideways until right here. Why does it take off? Because that's exactly where the Moxie indicator got to zero. Then it popped. Isn't that cool? Uh, yes, we do have a, a scanner for it. It comes with the package. Uh, yeah, incredible. Just absolutely incredible. Look at that timing. And then you say, okay, well, finally made it up here. 
well, what happened? Why did this thing fail? You know, Moxie indicator is still up here. Why is this thing failing? Well, that's why you got to use multiple time frames, and you have to have context. Context is key. So now we look at the higher time frame, the daily. Oh, look at this right here. Notice how on the daily chart, this this high on the hourly came right into the underside of the moving average on the daily, and look where our indicator was nowhere near zero. This never had a chance. That told us that this moving average was going to be very, very strong and almost impossible to penetrate. And that's exactly what it did. It just ran right up there, got plunked back down. Now what about again? Here's another time. Price tried to run. You know, couldn't do it. Just kept hitting its head and get pushed on down. You know, so I'm looking at Bitcoin. I'm trying to figure out where this thing's going to finally turn around and go. Uh, it might. I'm hopeful. I don't see why it wouldn't, but I'm not seeing any indication of that quite yet. So we're just going to have to give it some time and uh, figure that out a little bit later. How about Apple? Now, this one's fun. So I'm going to go back a little ways because I want to show some stuff for the investors now. People who are a little bit longer term, <clears throat> maybe they don't use the, uh, the hourly chart. Maybe they just do monthly, weekly, something like that. So let's walk this through. Just read it like a book. Here's double top, double bottom in price. Let's see if my cursor will finally work here. There we go. How about this? Got some divergence coming in. Okay. And then right here, price through the moving average. And where is, there we go. Look at that. The Moxie indicator was just waiting for price to catch up. It was like, look, I am already above zero. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for price to get where it goes. It comes back in, it tests the moving average, and that's when it pops. And we knew it was going to be popping. We knew that was going to be a strong moving average because look how high the Moxie indicator was. Now, coming in through this, everything's still good. Bounces off the moving average again. No problem. Still high. And now look at this. We have price up, and we have the Moxie indicator getting a little tired here. Now, this isn't exactly precise here on this one, and I'll show you why. So see how this wasn't quite lined up? It's telling us that there's actually, it's a little bit out of phase, and the indicator doesn't really want to pull price down. So let me then switch over to, here's the weekly chart, and where we are right here. Notice, this is on the weekly chart. Everything looks the same. All, all the same examples, all the same rules apply to every time frame. You just got to understand which time frame you're on. You see in through here how price got on top of the moving average and it tried to pop up a little bit. You see this is the line that I just drew, but it came back down. Well, why did it do that? It should have been going right here. The Moxie indicator had not reached zero yet, even though price was over the moving average. If we go back to our, our thing here, we didn't have everything there. What it did is it came back down into the moving average, tested its support, and this thing didn't start running until the Moxie indicator started to cross through zero. And now look at this thing. That's when it took off. Time, time, time again. And you can use this as a timing mechanism to figure out when this thing is going to go. So if we switch back over here real quick, you can see there's the line. Price bounced off of this bottom moving average, came up here, hit its head. Why? Because the indicator was below zero. No trade. How about this? Now price is back over the Moving average, and here we go. Indicator on top of zero. Off you go. Then let's do one more, because I want to answer some questions here. Divergence, and look here. Right as this crosses through zero, this thing kind of falls off. Now, this is on the daily chart. You need to step down to the hourly chart to figure out exactly where this precision is. That's the whole point of using multiple time frames, because you want to know when you're going to get in here. How about this one? Price over the moving average, indicator lagging. Right there. So, yeah, we get a little move, but it's choppy. It's choppy. And look, it falls right back down. Trap door. And we knew that because this was not, this was out of phase. This was not happening at the same time. Not good. So, anyway, I'll walk through enough of that. Um, let's see. Let me ask some questions. Okay, about Bitcoin. Uh, where would you enter along on Bitcoin? What price level? What conditions? Well, I don't see anything right now. 
So let me go back over to there. You know, there, there just isn't anything yet. We're below all the moving averages. The MOXIE indicator is below zero. It's below zero over here. We're also below the moving averages here too. So until I see something different, I'm not getting in. I can show you this. This is where I was willing to get in before. I zoom in out, see that? Here is price over the moving average, and here is the indicator over zero. There you go, entry. Same thing over here. Here is price over the moving average. Here is the indicator over zero. That was a good entry. Thanks, JV. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, Daniel, yeah, I do have uh, a bunch of moving averages here. I can't give everything away in this presentation, so um, if you have more interest in this, uh, that's where you know we switch over to the sales pitch and say, look, this is what we do. Um, TJ, the I don't know if you use it as an oscillator. This is just what it is. Um, I designed it myself. I got some special coding in there that I like, and you can just see how robust it is and how consistent how consistent it works. So. We'll go over here to MoxieTrader. So MoxieTrader.com, that's my website here. Uh, we're starting to fill it up with demos. You can see this, you know, come through, check this out. I got all sorts of examples. Started and post videos. You can check me out on YouTube and everything, how to trade Bitcoin. So this is a, a fun one. I'm getting a lot of hits on that. And then as far as purchasing, you get the Moxie indicator. So when you purchase, I send you the code, you actually get to own it. You put it on your thinkorswim. And because we don't want to just hand this thing over and say good luck, we want to make sure, just like I had, I had support when I started doing this. I mean, trust me, I, I told you my first three years, I didn't know what the heck I was doing and I suffered for three years, but I had good support and I had people keep telling me like where to go and how to do this. And I want to make sure that all the lessons I learned, and I give you a shortcut, we're going to include six months of mentoring webinars for free so that everybody who buys this will have a good long road to, to get going on this and make sure that they feel good with the product and are well taken care of. You also get my chart views. You know, if you if you like the way I have my charts set up, you get the indicator, you get the moving averages, you get my grayed out price, you get all that stuff. Twenty nine hundred dollars. The reason we're saying this is a thousand dollar value is because let's say you want to kind of just check me out for a little bit, see how my my mentoring is, see how I teach, see you, you know, just see what's going on a little bit first. What you can do is you can come into our mentoring webinar series for $147 a month. And uh, what we do, uh, about 90 minutes, we do uh, 8 o'clock Eastern. Let me get back up to here because I have that. We do Tuesdays, 8 o'clock Eastern. And then uh, I put out a second one at the end of the week. Uh, it's usually posted uh, Friday afternoon. That one isn't live. I just throw that out there because I'm not sure how many people actually want to come to a, a live one uh, on Friday or sometime over the weekend. And then come check me out on Facebook. I got a Moxie Trader page and a group. I know the group is more interactive, so hop on there, especially anybody that's new. Uh, we'll be talking about things. And um, you know, I'm starting to get my YouTube channel filled up and just kind of keep putting stuff out there. Uh, TJ, thanks. Uh, yeah, I like the name too. The whole point, when I started really designing this indicator, I was like, you know what? What are we trying to find in a stock? We're, we're trying to figure out something that has gumption. It has a lot of energy. You know, we want to see these things pop. We don't want a, a dull stock. We want a stock that's full of moxie. So I thought I'd get a little bit of a throwback name like that and have some fun with it. So moxie trader, we want to find stocks that got a lot of uh, gumption to them and a lot of moxie like this. So that's really what it is. Energy, um, momentum, what, fuel in the gas tank, all of that. So really, if anybody has any questions, uh, oh, as far as the purchase, you know, here's the purchase page. You got the menu, tells you everything that you get. Keep scrolling down. The actual purchase buttons here on the left side are for the indicator. You get six months of the webinars for free, and you get my charts. And uh, yeah, the scanner too, uh, that, that's part of the indicator. And then uh, on the right side here, if you just want to kind of check me out and see what I do for a while, drop us in for the, uh, the Moxie Trader mentoring webinars, $147 a month. We do them twice a week, so pretty good value there. You can come in, you can ask us questions. Uh, I believe this goes through PayPal. If you don't have PayPal, just reach out to here. We can still take a credit card payment, no problem. And if you have any questions, uh, it's info at moxietrader.com. Come here under contact, name, email, write me a message, drop me a line. And then as far as um, when you sign up, we're gonna be doing a little special for anybody who comes through the investor inspiration. We're gonna tell you about three 
you know, there's not always three, but if we got three, we're going to make sure we give them to you. And that's kind of our little incentive to say, hey, come on in, sign up. The market's doing great. Uh, we're still going to have a little bit of work, but uh, I hope I gave a pretty good demo about how this thing works and uh, why you should like it. So drop me a line, come say hi. Hope to see you soon. Thanks, everyone.